Pam and I first met when we were both on the board of directors at a not-for-profit in Broward County. We've been together, it'll be 17 or 18 years in November. Shortly after we met, we both took up golf, but I have to admit that Pam had a lot more patience for it. I think it's because she just loved being out on the golf course with friends. It really gave her a time to interact and spend time with people. And it also is an environment, frankly, where you can be outdoors and, and she was able to smoke. Pam has always been a, a, a prolific smoker. She. Uh, grew up in a tobacco family and so it was it was normal i'm told from her friends in high school that you know you or i may have had a candy dish in our living room when we were growing up and pam's family had a basket of cigarettes when you walked in the door i mean i pictured being 80 years old pushing her in a wheelchair with an oxygen tank through sawgrass mills with emphysema so you know i didn't like that potential future um, and we had two kids, so I was confused about, you know, the mixed messages that we were sending our kids, telling them not to smoke, but then having a, a role model who was smoking. I was in Washington for, for work, and I was supposed to fly to New York, and at the last minute, Pam said, you know, I'd really like you to come home for my dad's birthday. And so I flew home. I mean, it was just a totally last minute thing. And I actually had a flight to New York book for the seven o'clock the next morning. You look back on nights like that and you think, you know, when I left the house this, you know, the outfit that I was wearing, you know, all of these things, when you're going through those motions that, you know, you're getting dressed, you're putting your makeup on, you're just, the furthest thing from your mind is that the evening could end the way it did. I noticed that Pam didn't finish her coffee, which is a little unusual, and I noticed that one of the guests wanted to take her picture, and she sort of blew, blew off the woman, which is not like Pam. And about two minutes after that, she came up to me and said, you know, I'm really not feeling well, let's go now. So we got in the car and turned the corner, and as soon as we got around the corner, she said, I need you to drive, and that's when, that was the turning point. That's when I knew something was really wrong, because she doesn't do that. Uh, and so we switched seats and I looked over at her and she looked like death warmed over. I mean, she was gray, she looked just clammy and she, you could tell she just couldn't get comfortable. She was really in a lot of discomfort. So I asked what was going on. She had pain between her shoulder blades and she was nauseous and her, her arm seemed to be hurting and she asked, you don't think I'm having a heart attack, do you? And you know, there were two answers. One answer was, in my mind, one answer was, there's no way. It's just complete disbelief. And the other was, it's, that's exactly what this sounds like. All I remember is, we need to get to the hospital really quick then. And so I looked at her, I said, do we need to go through the red lights? Which was sort of, I guess, my way of saying, probably I was gonna go through the red lights anyway. It was sort of my way of saying, like, how bad really is this? And she said, yeah, and, and so right away I knew. So we got to the hospital within maybe two minutes. And they said to us, Pam's having a heart attack, but you got here just in time. It's just at the beginning, so it's gonna be okay. And the nurses were standing by and they were asking me questions, obviously. And you know, as soon as I would say, she smokes two packs of cigarettes a day, they would all say, ah, oh, okay. And the last nurse left the room to go get her water. And we were in one of those side rooms in the emergency room. And I was holding Pam's hand and we were talking, I don't remember what it was about, but I'm gonna guess it was about the Miami Heat. I guess there was a game on that night. And I asked her a question and in the middle of her sentence when she was answering me, um, her mouth just sort of dropped open, like sideways. And, um, and her eyes rolled back in her head. I, all I can say is time stood still. And they used those paddles on her, and they used them twice. And they put a bag on her face. And the machine that she was connected to just flatlined. My lungs were just filling up and I felt very relaxed and I was like, wow, I'm taking really deep breaths, thinking to myself. And I look up and I see this blue bag, I see an Ambu bag and I'm thinking to myself, oh geez, this is not a good sign. And then all of a sudden I remember seeing the bag move and it was pumping up and down and, um, and her eyes opened so I knew that she was back. 
and they took the AMBU bag off. And I looked at uh, Dr. Grimes and I said, did, uh, did we win? It was the Heat Game 7, the Eastern Conference Finals. And he said, uh, he goes, forget about the Heat tonight, because you're the winner. You just won. Okay, you know, I could have dealt with a heart attack, but knowing that I died, it's pretty weird. I realized that, you know, I could have, I could have left the hospital that night without her. scares the heck out of you, and you just realize life turns on a dime, and you realize it can happen again. He said, now do you need anything to stop smoking? Because if you don't, he goes, I'm going to see you in three years if you're lucky. If not, I won't see you. And I smoked probably a pack, pack and a half of cigarettes a day. And I said, I don't need anything. I said, the visual of the Ambu bag is enough. And um, so that was my last, you know, never smoked again. about it every day. I think I gotta go work out. I gotta eat right. I gotta recumbent bike in my office so in my office when I'm on doing emails I can be on that. I work out every day. I'm there every day doing cardio because I just don't want to stop because I feel like if I stop it's gonna be easier to forget to do it the next time. You, know, you sit there and you count your pills once a week and put them in that, that box and you're like oh my god it's surreal. It's definitely surreal. there were signs. I think as far as my color and things like that, my skin tone, I remember the day of my dad's birthday, I went and I got my hair blown and I was talking to George and I said, I look like garbage here. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, my skin tone. He goes, no, it's just the mirrors. We need to replace the mirrors in this place. And I was like, I just don't look right. Something doesn't look right. And um, I remember for like probably three, probably four months before that, it seemed like I was getting sick a lot more. And I kept thinking, something's going on. There's something going on. I never thought it was, I mean, I never thought it was my heart. Um, maybe I thought it was, maybe in the back of my mind, I might have, because I remember I would always feel like a little, just a little flutter sometimes. And I'd be like, oh, it's nothing. I'm working too hard. I'm stressed. And I remember being tired. Like, I would play golf with my friends, and I'd come home and I'm like, man, I'm beat. And I would uh, sort of like take a little nap. But I think in my eyes, my eyes weren't open. I felt like my eyes were like just shut, like I'd have to go like that. If I was in a picture, I would feel, make a cognizant, you know, motion to open my eyes and open them wide. And a lot of times I'd put sunglasses on, so I looked tired. And I remember going up the stairs and I'd get a little bit tired, but I kept thinking, look, I work in the hospice industry, I'm in healthcare, I'm young, not, I'm 52 years old, 53 years old, nothing's gonna happen to me. And, um, but I, and then it was interesting, after the fact, all my friends were like, oh, you looked like garbage, but we didn't want to say anything to you. And I was like, next time, can you make sure, please say something to me? But I remember a lot of friends saying, you just didn't look right, you looked yellow, you looked pale, you just looked tired. And you know, but it's hard to say to somebody, you look like you could be sick. But I think it's important that you do. I'm sure they, you know, were, were extremely influential in saving my life. And uh, because of the guidelines they set, the research and development they do, and, uh, you know, just the protocols they put in place in the hospitals, and, you know, how they make it such, you know, they put the timelines and all those things. I realize what's important and what's not important. You know, the things that you get upset about normally, you know, those things that you think are important, all of a sudden the rug's pulled out from under you and you realize, you know, really doesn't matter. These things don't matter. I mean, your health, your health matters, your family matters, your friends matter.